Okay, I'm Alan Leslie. Um, I'm a distinguished professor of psychology and cognitive science at Rutgers University. Well, my interests in my research uh, have really centered on the very beginnings, the origins of, of the human mind. Um, so that means infants and preschoolers um, and that fascinating period in between being a baby and being a preschooler, uh, a, a toddler. And one of the things that we discovered a long time ago now, many years ago now, was something that turned out to have relevance to understanding um, atypical development, in particular the disorder of childhood autism. This came about because I joined a new research unit in, in London, in the UK, in the early 80s, and met a wonderful colleague, Uta Frith, who was already an established authority on autism, and she was telling us about, about her research uh, and where that had got to. At that point, autism was known to have a strong ge genetic basis, and it showed by a series of sort of fairly unique characteristics having to do with an an impairment of being able to connect with other people, an impairment somehow in their, in their social skills, social lives. And as I, I was listening to Uta talk, she mentioned that one of the things that was disordered, different in autistic development, was that they didn't spontaneously pretend play. And I had been thinking about the problem of, of pretense as I sort of put my hand up and uh, said, well, you know, I, I think I might have an idea about why you would get this connection between pretend play and social life. And this, during the second year of life, one of the strange things that infants start to do is they start playing in regard to situations that are not there, they're not real, they're not true. The child pretends that an end is a telephone, or pretends that a, a, a block is a car, or something of that sort. Very, very simple. And um, I had the idea, sort of a bit of a leap at the time, I had the idea that this was really to do with the child being able to think about her own thinking and get control over her own mind and being able to choose to some extent what she can think about. But very small things. This is the second year of life. Um, well, one of the upshots of that idea was that babies, when they start to pretend these little, little games, if it's really about understanding minds, then you'd be able to understand somebody else's mind. You'd be able to understand when they pretend and you'd be able to follow uh, the little worlds that um, when they pretend, even though that world's not real. So that's kind of a, a, a problem for, for psychologists who want us always to be responding to the world as it really is. Well, this gave me the idea that really what the development of, of pretend, what was important was that it was a signal that the infant's brain was beginning to consider other people's minds, starting to consider other people's perspectives on the world. And of course, a perspective that the pretender is deliberately taking on the world. You're deliberately uh, changing uh, bananas in, uh, into telephones and blocks into cars, that kind of thing. So to understand that as somebody else's um, mind, uh, that was very striking 
to me. And this led, in regard to autism, the prediction that autistic children wouldn't understand other types of mental state in other people. Um, and that might have something to tell us about um, the nature of that disorder. And so this, was, this led to the development with um, Uta Frith, Simon Barn Cohen, who was a, a student, uh, a new graduate student at the time, to develop what's come to be known as the Sally and Anne task. And this is quite a well-known task now. Sally has a marble, and she places her marble in a box and goes away for a walk. And while she's away, Anne comes along and removes that marble from the basket and puts it in a nearby box. And the question is, well, the question to the child, when Sally comes back, where was Sally going to look for her mar marble? And the child then has to predict Sally's behavior. Um, goes with where the marble really is at that moment with her own belief. Then she'll say the box. But if she's able to appreciate Sally's perspective, which would be different from the child's, then Sally's going to still think that the marble is in the basket where she put it. This is called the Sally and Anne task. Uh, it's a test of a child's ability to understand another person's false belief, another person's perspective on the world. Um, well, it turns out that children, by the time they're four years old and typically developing, will be able to pass that task. But we find that um, children on the autistic spectrum, even though they could be much older um, and have higher, uh, higher um, intellectual functioning, tended to fail this task. And um, so that um, was a, the, the sort of first breakthrough in, in understanding the nature of the cognitive neural in autism. It also says a lot about um, um, typical development because it tells us that this period from about one year of age up to about five years of age is a period of a very rapid development of important skills that form the foundation for our ability to acquire cultures, to be educated. Um, and to take part in other kinds of social enterprises of that sort. Um, and if you are not equipped in quite the same way, you're going to find that a whole lot harder to learn about the social world, to learn about the inner world of other people. It's very hard to learn that about that or even to notice it because it's hidden. Mental states, our inner worlds, are hidden from other people. Uh, they're invisible. Uh, you can't touch them, you can't feel them. So how does a young brain, as a baby, begin to um, Well, think, well, that there is at least a genetic basis for our ability to notice, imagine other people's inner worlds, and to understand other people's behavior in terms of their inner world, what they want, what they intend, what they believe, what they're pretending, what they're joking, and so on. And this, this turns into a, um, a very big world uh, for you to learn about.